So, do you guys know that you came for this talk? Yeah, C sharp on Android. How many of you are Android developers here? Wrong question. How many of you are native Android developers here? Okay, how many on the hybrid front? Phone gap? Perfect. C sharp developers. Oh, just him, just him. All right. Oh, there's one person there. Anybody who's tried Xamarin before? No? Perfect. So, so this is going to be a very primer session to Xamarin, uh, C sharp on Xamarin. Uh, but how many of you are ready to learn Xamarin? Uh, sorry, C sharp. C sharp. It's, it's like Java, right? Brother from another mother, that's it. Better right? Than <laughs> Better than Java? All right. <laughs> okay, so, so, so it's, if you know Java, you would, you would find it at home doing C sharp. All right, so uh, my name is Nish, and I work as a developer evangelist at Xamarin, and I'm also a Microsoft MVP for C sharp. Uh, that's why I've been advocating C sharp a lot, but I love Java as well. Um, so my Twitter handle is nishanil, and my email is nish at xamarin.com if in case you want to reach out to me after this uh, session. So just to give you connecting the dots, Xamarin. You know, how many of you heard about Xamarin in the past one year? Right, past three years? Anybody? Three years? Nobody. Ten years? No? Nobody at all. W wonderful, right. So it, it, it was never there 10 years ago, but I want to connect this dot. Uh, anybody know this project called Mono? Yes, a few of us. So the guy, Miguel de Icaza, okay, um, you know, he has been a contributor to the FOSS community for a long, long time. He's uh, famous for the Genome Project. He had this, whenever he, when he saw this dot .NET implementation, uh, you know, submitted to the ECMA standards, he was like, hey, I want to build this. He's a Linux geek, and he, he said, I want to build a compiler for this uh, in Linux, and that's when everything started, and he named it as Mono. Okay, Mono is the runtime, basically a .NET implementation on Linux. That's when it started, so it's in, in the year 2001, a company called Zimian was found, along with Miguel and Nat Friedman, they founded this company. After two years, um, you know, with, it all happens to all the startups, an acquired uh, thing happened, and uh, it was Novell, which took over the Zimian, and because Mono was in open source nature, uh, it got ported into various of the plat platforms. And one of the platform, two of the platforms that you, you would know, maybe, is the Mono for Android, and also known as Mono Droid, and also Mono for iOS, which is Mono Touch, right? So these were the two platforms which came out of uh, Novell platform. And in 2011, uh, the Mono team was sent out, definitely a layoff, and that's when the Xamarin was found. So Xamarin is the new name uh, to the, the old Mono team. So we are the same team uh, which built Mono for ages, right? Cool. So just to give you a brief, you know, what Xamarin is today, Xamarin is focused completely on mobile development. It is focused on iOS, Android development in C Sharp. And uh, we are also uh, a big supporter for this technology called Calabash. You guys have heard about Calabash, automation testing? for iOS and Android, so we are big supporters for Calabash as well, and uh, we have something called a test cloud where you can take your test scripts, automation test scripts, and run it on real devices, thousands of devices, and um, you know, test your Android and iOS uh, applications. Cool. All right, so talking about mobile approaches, um, how many of you have an Android phone here? Great. iOS? iPhones? iPhones? Yeah, quite a few. Oh, Windows phone? Great. Great. So how many of you have all the three? <laughs> Great. You, you may be in a, in a serious business, right? <laughs> you, you might be in a serious business. Uh, you own a shop or something? No? <laughs> okay, so when you build for mobile, right, we, we build for consumers at the end of the day. So we look at three platforms at the least. One is the Android, the Windows Phone, and the iOS. So if you, as a developer, if I want to build for Android, you guys know, you use Eclipse or Android Studio, uh, and then use Java as a language and build this application. And similarly, if you want to build on iOS, the problem is you as a developer may not be able to build it, but you know, you, if you're good enough, you can, you can learn Objective-C, and you can use this tooling called Xcode, and then build this native app application in iOS. And same with uh, Windows, right? There's a completely different tooling. Uh, there's a Visual Studio, and there is .NET and C Sharp there. Completely different tooling. And this is exactly the reason why today we have something called as write once, run anywhere approach. Right? I mean, you would have heard about this. If you're building native, your manager would have come and said, hey, we want to ship things really fast. Why don't we look at some other cross-platform solutions? And, and some one thing which comes up all the time is write once, run anywhere approach. What is this approach all about? It's, at the end of the day, it's nothing but a simple web view put in front of the user, 100% height, 100% width, 
And all, all that this thing does is takes HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, and then displays that to the user as an app, right? Now, this is good for small apps, but does it, can it scale? I don't know. It's, it's, it's too early to talk about that. So Xamarin took a different approach. As you know that, you know, we have a runtime which runs on Linux, right? And similarly, we wrote it for iOS and Android. So we took a completely different approach in building a cross-platform solution. So one thing I want you guys to understand is Xamarin is not a right once run anywhere approach. That's not our intention at all. What we do is we expose the existing platform as this in C Sharp. Okay? So we project this. You would have heard it as called as projections, but in, internally we call it as bindings. So we bind this entire Android jar and we project it into the C Sharp. So what is the advantage of it? You can build everything native. There is no HTML-based solution. It's completely native. And the beautiful thing about this is you're, since you're writing in a single language, you can share technically almost all the business logic across all the three platforms. That way, you get the native UI, you get the native performance, and you're not compromising on sharing the code as well. Okay, we will look at how we do that. Uh, and another thing is, if you're building Android apps, you know that how do you build it? The UI, that is in XMLs, right? Android XMLs, right? It is exactly the same XMLs that you will be using to build your UI in Xamarin. In case of an iOS, you will still use the same storyboards. Now in iOS, the storyboards, uh, whatever you design in the UI, that is connected back in Objective-C, and in Android, it's your Java code which is basically inflating your XML, right? Now here, the, all these backend code is run in c -sharp, not in Java or Objective-C. So that's what makes it unique in its approach, okay? You get this point, right? All right, so just to give you a little more depth of how this whole thing works, right? At, at, at the bottom of it is the SDKs. Apple gives an SDK, uh, gives you UI kit, map kit, uh, scene kit, sprite kit, whatever kits, right? And Android has its own APIs, NFCs, uh, you know, whatnot, the UI widgets and all those kind of things. We expose that in, in C Sharp using a technology called bindings. So we have Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android. That, those are the bound layers, okay? And so if, you if you see this, um, you have this them. Them is nothing but we are talking about Apple and the Google. And us is us. We, we provide you as a platform. And this is a whole lot of your code, which is you will have platform-specific code written in separate projects. Plus, you will also have a shared code which can be shared across all the platforms. I'm just showing you Android and iOS, but it could be technically any, any platform which uses C Sharp as a language, or F Sharp as a language, for that matter. Okay? So <clears throat> just to give you, uh, I'm not sure if you see this right, but probably in the code you'll, you'll be able to see that. Um, in Java, you, let's say if you have a list view and you have to provide a click event for that, you, you set the set I, on item click listener, and you provide this whole code into this. Now, C Sharp, it becomes a little more simpler by saying list view dot item click, and then you have this uh, whole lambda expression that you can go in, and it, you give the same thing, more or less very similar thing. And also, C Sharp has this beautiful async and await support, which is nothing, nothing but you know when you want to spawn multiple threads, it's very easy to do that uh, at the compiler level itself. Right. So let's look at a demo. So. <clears throat> Uh, usually you can do this demo completely in Visual Studio, but Xamarin Studio is a free IDE based on an IDE called Mono Develop, again an open source project, uh, and it's completely free. So I'm using that, so you can build C Sharp projects in, in Mac, Mac using this uh, Xamarin Studio as well. Cool, so to start an Android project, you just file new solution, and you have an option called Android and iOS. You all can see it, right? You good? Perfect. So you have an Android and iOS. So again, the same options that you get usually in Java. Uh, you know, are you building an Android application? Or, and there's, there's a set of templates. So I usually go and pick up the Android application so it gets, gives me the latest uh, uh, application, right? And once it is done, um, on the right side, you can see the solution out there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just zoom in, right? So that's your project. Do you see those assets, resources? And then you see mainactivity.cs? In Java, you would just see it as .java, right? So if I open the resources, do you see the same folders, right? Drawable, layout, menu, values, exactly the same thing. Now, if I go to layout, you all know that your XMLs, that's where your UI relies on, right? So we tag this as .axml. It's the same XML, but then you know, we wanted our ID to understand an Android layout, 
which is different from XML. That's all. It's just a dot .axml extension. But at the end of the day, it's the same XML that you would write. Now, let me just zoom this out. OK, so that's the uh, designer. Uh, so you can choose uh, on one, what platform you're designing and whether you want alternative layouts, like you want to build on landscape, uh, you know, HDPI, LDPI, all those kind of things. Um, right, so let me just show you the source. Now, this is the same linear layout that you would see on Android, exactly the same thing. So now let's, let's go and write something out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an image. Um, so I'm going to dra drag and drop an image. And then two buttons, right? I'll tell you what exactly these things are going to do is I want one button which takes a photograph from my gallery and the other button just to make a share, sharing the photo on Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is, right? Very simple app. And uh, <clears throat> you obviously need to name these uh, stuffs. So you can go to the source and name it, or else um, there is something called as properties window, which because of its, um, you know, it's, 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 it's stuck to 1024, 760 for resolution. So, OK, let me go to the button and then give this name. Instead of button 1, I'll call it as uh, pick button. And you technically get the same thing, um, like the text. That's what you will go and edit in your XML. Um, so I'll say pick an image, pick an image, and uh, another button, which is a share button. And I'll just say share image. OK, so that's all done. I'm going to close this XML view. And what's the next thing that you, you're going to do? This XML, this layout has to be inflated, right? In your activity. So you have this activity.cs, which is, in your case, it would be activity.java. And you have this method called onCreate, right? And there is a me method called setContentView. Can you see that? Can you see this from there, Last, Yeah, perfect. So you have a setContentView. And in Java, you would have r.layout.blah, right? The, pr the thing is, in, in C Sharp, we usually give the full name. So it's resource dot. Uh, the layout dot main. That's all the differences. So it inflates that main uh, XML that it was showing right now. And now let's get the handle of it. Now in C sharp, when I want to wire up the code, when I click on this button, I basically want to pick a photo, right? So what do you do in Java? Someone from the Java world? What do you do? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Find view by ID. That's it. So we have generics um, a method for find view by ID, where now you can say resource dot uh, ID dot uh, I created a button called pick button. Now, when this inflates, this gives an C sharp object. Now, exactly the same thing I would do for the share button as well, right? So I'll just create a share button, and perfect. Now I want to create a event listener, right? On this click of a button, I want to inflate. Um, sorry, not inflate. I want to write an event for it. <coughs> so I have a click method. And now I can decide whether I want to do a, you know, a synchronous method or a synchronous um, event handling. So right now, we'll stick to the synchronous event handling. And I already have written a few um, methods out here. Basically, it's something called a pick photo, um, the same intent. I open the intent with um, I'm looking for image slash star, and then I start the activity and say intent.create choose it, blah, blah, right? And also, once this, once this photo has been picked up, I need to assign that uh, to that image view, right? And that is done in your, obviously, in your method, um, which is on activity result, where you set this up. So I need to get the handle of that image view as well. To do that, it's, it's very simple again. So I just pick up the picture. It's a variable that I created already. And uh, I say image view resource.id dot image view one. That's it. And I can also create the share button. There you go. Share photo. Again, if you go down, there is a share photo method, um, which writes to the stream and all those things. So I mean, this is pretty same, exactly the same thing that you would do in Java. Uh, so I'm going to run this. It's 
So <coughs> we're running on the 5.0. So there you go. You have the buttons. You see that material design theme. That's because in the assembly.manifest file, I'm going to set the theme there. So pick an image. And there you go, this beautiful Xamarin monkey. It works, right? And I can say share image now that I don't have any other contracts other than just messaging. And it uh, opens this SMS uh, stuff. Is it, isn't this the same thing that you do in Java? Yes or no? Yes. Everybody awake or asleep? I thought demo, demos are going to be interesting. I know that it's Java, I think, maybe, right? <laughs> right, so now when you build for platforms, right, when you build for mobile, you have to give importance to the platform importance. Um, so because more platforms definitely is more customers. So now, as a developer, imagine if you were a Java developer, if you had to build an iOS application, how hard is it to go learn Objective-C and do that, right? It's going to be really tough. It's not easy. So that's what uh, teams do. They spin up a different team altogether. Uh, and an Objective-C team and a Java team. Java team does the Android, Objective-C does the iOS and all those things. But now, having this particular platform like Xamarin, being a C-sharp developer and knowing one just one ID like Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio, you can program the iOS and Android as well. All that you need to do is how does these APIs work? That's it. Just like you saw. Now, now you saw Android. Everything that you do it in Android is exactly the same. Now, exactly the same way you would do it in iOS world. You would use Objective-C uh, there, but in, in this case, you would use C-sharp. So <clears throat> one important thing that I didn't show here is, first thing I wanted to show you is that this is exactly same as your Java. Now the next thing is, now why are you doing in Xamarin? Because you have the benefit of architecting for cross-platform. So that means the one important aspect of building for cross-platform is sharing uh, a majority of the code across all the platforms, right? So <clears throat> there are multiple ways to do it, but let me focus on one way, that is using the portable class library. It's basically a single assembly targeting multiple platforms. So any business logic, right, any business logic that is not dependent on your platform can be ported into a portable class library, compile it, and reference these libraries in those other projects. That way, you have the majority of the code that can be shared across all the platforms, right? Because you're writing in single language, right? So it's very easy. For example, uh, I take this photo, I'm uploading to the cloud. Now, uploading to the cloud is just one piece of code or one set, set of code that I don't have to report, repeat itself in Objective-C and Java because that is a C-sharp that can be shared across all the places, right? That's, that's what makes uh, Xamarin a little different from other cross-platform solutions. So <clears throat> generally, I mean, this is all the, the question always I get it, like, what's the statistics? How, do you, how, do you, how, much of, how much of the code can be shared? Well, it totally depends on your application. If your application is completely UI intense, right, then you will have more code on those layers. If your application is less UI intense, then you will have more code to be shared across. Simple example is, let's say, a healthcare company, which has a huge set of business logic, HIPAA rules, right? Huge set of business logic. That company can take this whole set of code and port it to all the three platforms without much worrying about the other layers. Other layers is nothing but the UI, which has to be recreated in all the two, three platforms. That way, you can get up to 90% of code share. Uh, these are real-time uh, applications like iCircu, TouchDraw. These are award-winning applications in the App Stores um, who have shared about 90% of the code share. But there are ways to, uh, you know, using open source libraries like MVVM Cross, and now with Xamarin Forms, you can actually reach up to 99 or 100% of the code share as well. Uh, but again, depends on totally depend on, on your project. Okay, so very simple question. So what code will go into my PCL or a shared library? Very simple. Anything that is not dependent on your platform, I can't take anything from image view into the portable class because that wouldn't work. That wouldn't compile, right? Anything that after you pick the image view, you took the image, that's a stream. That can be ported easily, so something like that, right? So anything which is not dependent on the platform can be shared to all the other uh, platforms easily. Uh, one simple example um, is Azure or Parse. Uh, we had a good demonstration on Parse, right? So one of the questions I, I heard that, you know, what if I want to switch from Azure to Parse? What would I do, right? Now, that's easy in Xamarin. That's very, very easy in Xamarin because that you will be writing a database layer which is accessing the Azure or which is accessing the Parse. I can create an interface by which my entire uh, flow works, but the concrete in implementation can be either Parse or Azure, and I can switch within the app itself. Okay, I'll show you that. So what other codes can go in? Any business logic, any cloud integration, any, anything like database access. If you're, you know that all the three platforms have SQLite. So the code to access the SQLite remains same across all the three platforms. You don't have to re-repeat it. 
Right, so let's uh, see a sample. So do I have enough time? I do, right? Cool. So ideally, a cross-platform uh, solution would look like this. This code, you, you can get it from my GitHub. It's, it's all up there. Um, it also has a simple test solution, which you can run it in Windows, which will tell you how much of code has been shared across all the three platforms. OK, so here's, my, here's how I design it. Any Android application, I call it as .android or .droid. And then I have other applications with iOS. And then I have the Windows Phone application as well. Now you see this part, .portable. That's the library which is referenced in all the other three places. OK? So let me show you what is there in the portable class library. So everything that we call it as business layer, uh, data layer, the, all the helpers, interfaces, models, all these things doesn't have to repeat. It's in one encapsulated library. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at, let me run this application to show you what exactly this is. So while that runs, if you want to um, see, one of the questions that comes up is how do I target different, different Android builds, right? So I can go and set these things out here. I can choose, um, but am I start targeting Android 5 um, or any other uh, versions that I w I'm interested in, right? So that's all in the options. I, again, this is all nothing but, which is fetched up from the manifest file. Cool, so this is an expense app. OK, just recording my expenses. I add a new expense. Let's call it as um, cab expense or something like that. Cab to uh, draw con event, right? Total of 100. Uh, and I can choose what category I'm interested in and say and save. Now, when I save this, what exactly is happening is it is saving in a SQL light. Just to show you how exactly this works, um, you have a database layer. And uh, this is an expense database. And you can see that SQLite connection, right? And it, it has this uh, save method, save item method, which updates the database. Now, where exactly this uh, uh, saves is using this shared project. Um, I'm trying to explain it so that I don't confuse you enough, um, because it's all C-sharp. But at the end of the day, you understand that it's just a simple uh, repository pattern, right? You have database, uh, you're saving it, and all those kind of things. Um, OK. So you have all these data. Now, let me show you this iOS, same iOS application. If I open the iOS, anybody iOS developers here? OK, perfect. So you have app delegates there. Yeah, so we start everything from app delegate. You have the same method, finish launching, and you have navigation controllers. If you look at the view, you have expense view controller. So all those UIs specific to iOS remains there. There, when you save, ultimately it calls this library, which is a portable class library, within that, the class out there, you had a question? Oh, cool. Uh, to s save, right? Cool. So now let me run this iOS app. I'm going to set this as the start project. Run with uh, maybe iPhone 6, iOS 8.1. So this would open your iOS simulator. Hmm. That's something strange. Let's take another simulator. OK, so that's your iOS simulator, and you exactly have the same features, OK, expense and add and all those things. Perfect. Now, now the next thing is, now you have shipped your app, which is obviously it's, it's only having the SQLite behind the scenes. 
But if you want your users' data to be scaling, you have to obviously take everything to the cloud, right? So that you know you have someone has saved in his Android device, he should be able to get the same data when he opens up his iOS device, right? So that's when uh, MBAS solutions comes into picture where as a mobile developer, I don't have to worry about my infrastructure, uh, all those kind of things, right? You just have a mobile backend, somebody like Parse can give you that, or um, you know, even, even for that matter, uh, Azure Mobile Services, which I'm gonna show you the demo right now, but you can do it on Parse. So if you want those components, they are all available to you in REST-based services. They're very simple REST calls, you can do that, but also the Parse and Microsoft have written components in um, in, in, in Xamarin, which you can use, which is nothing but a set of client SDKs that will give you access to the parts and uh, Azure Mobile Service. So you can just say get more components and search for parts. Uh, assuming that I have a good internet, yeah. So if I want parts, I would just go and search for parts. And it would give me a parse framework, and then I can just add to the app. So that gives me the parse SDK. And I can now take all the data that I was saving right now in SQLite to the Parse, okay? Here, what I did for this demo, I'm using Azure Mobile Services. So when you're using Azure Mobile Services, again, they have the same component. Uh, once I wrote that component, all that I need to do to make sure that both my iOS and Android app, plus my Windows Phone app, they are cloud compliant. All that I do is I go to my portable library, because that's the shared library. Within the portable library, I go and say services, now there's two services, expenseservice.cs, which is which until now which was using cloud, uh, sorry, SQLite. Now I'm gonna use something called as Azure service, which is going to connect to the cloud, okay? All that I'm gonna do is, uh, if you have attended any of the other talks, you initialize it using the keys and the URL that you are pointing to, that's it. This is my Azure backend, I initialize it, that's, that's, that's all about it, and I just run this. Now what's gonna happen is no more this application is working with your SQLite locally, it is gonna work with your cloud backend, right? It is that fast, you can build on all the platforms. So now you saw something called as authenticate screen which is coming up, okay? So what I did is, when you're pushing your data to the cloud, right, you need to authenticate the user because you can technically store anything into the cloud. But you need to, you need to make sure that, hey, this is the user and this is the user's data. So the best way is use, use any of the authentication services. And I did not write any of these codes here, right? I said that authenticate with Azure and automatically it put the screen in front of the user. Um, so I'm just gonna, right, sign in. Let me also start my Android. So now when I save something, let's say, uh, Droid con meal expenses or something like that. And which is about 150, that's too much. Now when I'm saving, it is not saving locally. It's saving to the cloud. But my architecture in such a way that you know, it also saves in the SQLite locally, but it also pushes to the cloud. Now that's the offline sync, you can do it, you can implement it in many other ways as well. Okay, let me just, um, did that run? I don't think it did. So let me just yeah. So that's the app. So you saw that Android application also started with authentication. It was not there. It's just that one line of code that I uncommented. Uh, it brings in that new feature altogether. Right, so let's wait. Do you have any questions? I can take it up because it's just the last demo that I want to show. Yeah. So uh, it's like C sharp. We write the code, and uh, Android will support it, right? Because you have a mapping around like C sharp and Android code. So can be it, uh, it is possible like you you have an Android code already, and there are shared components which can be used directly in iOS. So can we do like give the code of Android and then run in iOS that shared component? You okay? Let me understand this question. Like right. the you SQLite 
thing yeah. you have yeah. developed for uh, Android, right? Yeah. The full layer of database. Yeah. Can it be reused in iOS directly? Using it is. It is what is happening right now. It is reused directly. No. Uh, I mean, I have to write C sharp code for that, right? Correct. Can it be like converted to C sharp? You uh, can. There, there are there are technologies like uh, Sharpen. There are tools like Sharpen where you can convert that Java code that you already written to C sharp, C -sharp. compile it in C sharp, and you can take take it to iOS and Android as well. Oh, okay. And uh, if you see, the, if there is another question that usually comes up, like, hey, I already have a component written in Java, right? The yeah. huge component in Java. Yeah. Now I want to take that component to Android. I don't want to rewrite this whole thing. You can bring it because that's how we brought the entire framework up in C sharp. This, that project is called bindings, and that's that's uh, that's a whole lot of thing. Okay. okay. So using bindings, you can bring in those uh, even those APIs to uh, C sharp. Oh, okay. Even okay. the UI widgets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, is there any way of using existing Java libraries, like for example, Crashlytics, which do not have a Xamarin port? Yeah. With Xamarin, uh, yeah. using this. Yeah. That's that's what I said. You you can use the same. It's it's a dog pudding. No, I mean existing libraries, even which are not port. I mean, I don't have the source code of or something. You can. That that's how I mean. That's how we do it. Like iOS, we don't know iOS source code at all, right? We brought the iOS bindings to C sharp. Okay, so, so just the bindings, bindings you need, right? Yes. Okay. In iOS, what happens is we use that uh, P invoking technology, where you directly call the C. In 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 C in ja in Android, what happens is we make the JNI calls to the Java. Thank so you. you can bring the Java library to C sharp, but the same library wouldn't work in iOS because of its nature, right? Uh, maybe you're not the right guy to ask, but what are the cons of using? Uh, what is the okay? That's that's a great question to ask. <laughs> but he, here's what I don't see it as a con. But since we are making use of Mono, right? Mono is the framework that at runtime that is running below this particular thing. So your Mono runtime, you know that Java runs on Dalvik. Now Dalvik is there, available everywhere, right? All the all the devices that you buy in Android has Dalvik, but Mono doesn't come with that. So Mono gets attached to your uh, app. Which means your size can go up a little bit, and we use a linker technology to extract out the code that you don't use it, uh, but still there are chances that you know your your size will be a little larger than what you will write in Java. Yeah, ideally, what what this demo is supposed to happen is it is going to authenticate, and you would see the same thing because it just saves in the cloud and it just fetches from the cloud, right? So how fast does uh, Samarin keep up with the changes in different platforms? Same day, same day. Yeah, so <clears throat> um, so I basically wanted to, when I talk about that, um, I'll, I'll, I'll take your question, just, just a minute. So reuse a Java library, it's possible. And uh, it's there on my homepage because I wrote a blog on bringing the YouTube API to C Sharp. Um, so you can see how it is done, bringing Java to C Sharp. And um, variable programming, that's another thing where I was talk wanted to talk about. C Sharp now supports even Google Glass uh, and on the same day when Google Glass was released, when it was announced in I.O., uh, the, the API I'm talking about, and uh, our team came and wrote the bindings for it because it's pretty easy to write bindings once it is available. But they, they are available on the alpha channel almost within a week, but for it to get stabilized, it would take some time. But if you want immediate support, you can take the alpha channel and we are there to support you on the forums. Yeah, so you can, you can actually do all these things. You know, program for the Android Wear, uh, Glass or Amazon Fire TV, everything is possible. And if there is any other new device coming up, you can do it as well. You can bring it to C Sharp as well. Any other questions? Yes, you can do that. Yes, you can. You can call the native because, as I told you, the mono itself is written in the C C plus plus layer, the mono runtime. So that gives you the native capability to call, call the C and C plus plus codes as well. Um, I can show it to you. That's a that's a completely different stack altogether. Any other question? What about the pricing of Xamarin? Is it something we have to pay for? Uh, no, it's a, there's a free starter edition which is good enough for all the small apps. Uh, if you're a if you're an open source developer, we being an open source uh, company for a very long time, uh, and supporting open source, we give you free if you're developing an open source application, and it's free for students completely. 
Okay. Uh, but the business edition, there is a pricey because if you're working with Visual Studio and other kind of things, because that's where the real enterprise thing stuff comes in and, and we want to make a little bit of money there. So enterprises uh, will pay, yeah. Thank you. Sorry? By enterprises? Uh, any, any company which is uh, larger than five developers. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah. Um, Requiring Visual people. Studio to develop, uh, you know? Any okay. Visual Studio investments and all those kind of things. Okay, if any company wants to develop using the uh, Xamarin Studio? Yeah, I mean, there is an indie version. But again, the Xamarin Studio, indie version has, uh, see, starter edition has a cap that, you know, there is a size limit and other things. But indie version doesn't have any cap. You can build on Xamarin Studio completely. Okay. Uh, but if, you're, if you want it on Visual Studio, because a lot of our customers, like, you know, it's C Sharp customers, right? They are already on Visual Studio. Right. When they want to develop, they have to pay for the business edition license. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So my question is that uh, how does Xamarin different from hybrid app development? Yeah, it's totally different, right? Because when you say hybrid app, um, I, I told you in the beginning we have this HTML-based solution, right? Xamarin is not about HTML-based solution. What, what we do is we project the existing platform up in one language, so you have the benefits of sharing the code across all the other platforms. So basically the app development done in uh, Java must be have a, a higher level of performance issue than uh, we are converting in it Xamarin. There so is Xamarin is doing C sharp to Java and then no. Java to XML. No, and no, 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 no. It is not doing C sharp to Java. Okay. It is using JNI technologies to call whenever whenever there is a Java widget or something which you're using from the Java world. It makes a JNI call. That's it. It does not. Uh, every other C sharp runs on the mono runtime in case of an Android. No. So uh, how can I use the native uh, apps basically? like uh, the native development done in uh, like third party jar files or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's what I said, uh, talked about the bindings, right? You can, you can bring the third party library because what it does is it writes a wrapper on top of it, okay, which is nothing but JNI calls. Okay. Okay, which is nothing but JNI calls. So your jar is going to run on your, in your, in your Dalvik VM, right? Your jar is going to run on that and when our code is running on C sharp mono runtime, whenever you have any f a call there, it is going to make a JNI call. So basically, uh, why uh, uh, Xamarin is not so much into uh, replacing hybrid? No, we are into native development. We give, we give everything that a Java developer would get, you get the same thing in C Sharp. But the benefit is code sharing. That's no, the no, basically the idea is that uh, we have iOS native, we have uh, Windows native, we have uh, uh, Android. Android native. Yeah. So uh, if Xamarin is uh, like providing C sharp to develop all of the platforms, then uh, why uh, users or developers like us are not moving to Xamarin? <laughs> so, okay, I pr probably you didn't Why we are doing native development in dot Java so and I, my, my iOS is, Objective-C and my, like my that. My question is, you are a Java developer, are you doing the iOS application yourself? Yeah. Are you doing the iOS application yourself? No, uh, right now I'm working in uh, .NET and uh, Java. So that's why I'm thinking that if I have to go for iOS also, so I know C Sharp and I can move with Xamarin. So that's why what I want to ask that why all the developers are making native apps in Java and uh, Objective-C and why they are not using Xamarin? Um, probably I think uh, they are not listening to my talks too much, that's why. <laughs> Just joking, but but the, but the thing is, uh, I know why you're asking this question is why Xamarin adoption is very slow, right? The other way to put it on. No, I'm not uh, saying that Xamarin is slow in this and that way, but I'm uh, uh, I just want to ask why Xamarin had not evolved like this, like uh, if from the first day I may know that there is a tool like Xamarin which can be used to convert the application in uh, native Android and iOS and Windows. So I may be using Xamarin from the day one. No, not everybody are C sharp developers, right? That's one, one answer to that. No, basically C sharp development is quite okay with uh, this phase. Like uh, the evolution of Android came up with lots of Java developers. But before that, everybody is going into web-based application development. So uh, I just want to know that why Xamarin is not so much into use. Popular uh, is another way yeah, because I'm not using so it's not popular, but <laughs> why <laughs> the basic is thing uh, why all developers are not moving into Xamarin? Uh, they will they will move. 
<laughs> maybe we can put it this way uh, the uh, it's about awareness and yeah. adoption of uh, uh, xamarin and i guess so, that's so exactly I'll, what i'll tell you what now slowly started people have started really realize why why do why why was the phone gap adoption was so high because all the web developers are mobile developers from the day one right they were they are ready to they, they are able to de develop mobile application very very soon right so again xamarin is very focused on c sharp and that could be one reason where you know not not everybody is interested to learn c sharp and then uh, build on ios and or on windows phone though you see the benefits of being native you know and we are getting there that message is loud and clear now we have a lot of people coming back from phone gaps and other html based solution where they have burned their fingers and say hey now we can't go to native but we really want to do something cross platform that's where xamarin is picking up uh, but yeah adoption it's coming up it's coming up and and also the price could be one other factor price could hi. be one other factor yeah hi yeah uh, one last question okay there's two i'll take the two of two of them very soon very soon yeah okay uh, so you you talked about uh, the mono runtime is exported with the app for yes. c sharp yes. right yes. okay and then it it uh, does gni calls to java correct now um uh, earlier uh, till uh, android kitkat uh, dalvik was the default vm dalvik was the default correct. runtime correct yeah, yeah now lollipop uh, comes art yeah. okay which um, as far as i understand is much more optimized uh, ahead of time compilation path correct. prediction and all that is there they i th i feel that they're trying to do what jvm does very well right, right. so um, can you throw some light on uh, what yeah. kind of opt uh, is mono or uh, that uh, that optimized yes. that i can run uh, that amount of business because you said like business logic is the uh, heavy business logic is a very good use case for this yeah. right Correct. so uh, does mono uh, do such kind of optimizations it does so mo in mono mono has been 13 years old it's much more uh, you know powerful than dalvik is actually know if you look at the performance wise and other things uh, but it is not the full mono which is there in android yet so mono is optimized we we have ahead of time compilation in mono for ios because ios doesn't allow you to run any kind of uh, runtime so mono has aot as well so that those optimization has been carried forward uh, in the java world as well and we support art to the fullest you saw every i was running everything on 5.0 yeah so it it supports fullest and it is optimized very well for the um, for the art as well uh what uh, how is the documentation about this i mean uh, the, the android document java documentations are like humongous correct uh, what about xamarin so xamarin documentation has been very focused on c sharp developer adapting to android apis so so here's what i do when i when when my documentation i feel that you know it is not enough i can go to the java documentation i can do the exact same thing in c sharp because i can i just have to refer right i'm we are all developers we understand the algorithms there we can just make it yourself. so the android develop android documentation that you see there is as good for even the Xamarin uh, Android as well. Thank you, Nishant. Uh, thanks a lot.